Spread the news around. <laughs> Come, let's praise the Lord. Hey, good morning. Yes, good morning to all of you. Good morning. Let's get our Instagram family in. We're so excited about being here this week. This is a very, very special week for us. Uh, here in Detroit, this is our week of the gala, our 50th gala, and oh God, we are so excited, we are so excited, come on in, Elder Manny, God bless you, I can't wait to see you, good morning, Dean, good morning, good morning, Deborah Brown, good morning, Pastor John Davis, God bless y'all, hey y'all, Dr. Patricia James, we're here. Sunny, God bless you. Wanda Sue, are you coming across the bridge? <laughs> Kimberly, let's go, let's go. Oh my God, I'm already crying. <laughs> I've been crying all morning. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Oh my God. It's so amazing to me. I've been crying all morning, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I've been crying all morning. Good morning, TJ. Good morning, Jay Book. What's up? What's up? Bless you, Granny. God bless you. Good morning, all the sisters. Good morning, sir. Thank you for your help, Sanity. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Nothing like a good adjective, right? Good morning, Pastor Rita Bill. Can't wait to see you, pretty girl. Let's go, Benita Towns, the Avana Reynolds. Erskine. Good morning, Bishop Herbert Jackson. Safe travel. I was listening to you. I love it when the Holy Spirit hits you. <laughs> I've been crying all day, all morning. I think I started last night. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Joe Folsom, let's go. Come and praise the Lord. We are in a good season. We are in a great season. That's Sheila Dallas. Dallas Johnson. Good morning, Pastor Workshop. Good morning, Thea. Good morning. God bless you, Dr. Wilson. Amen. Charles Paul Dove. Let's go, Marietta Richmond. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, April. Good morning, Alan. <laughs> Oh, we did some dance and study. Alex shouted. <laughs> Woo! It's a great time. It's our year of Jubilee. Can you believe it? 51 years. Uh, March the 2nd, 1972. But last year we were in the midst of COVID, so we did not um, think it wise to have the big celebration. Oh, but this week, baby. <laughs> good morning, good morning, Pastor Doug Cody. Good morning, Doc. Curtis Lee, good morning, Elder Barbara Jokin. Yes, Linda Titan Reeves. Let's go. Richard Horton. Yes, come on, Cook. I bless you. You should write me a poem for the 50th. Uh, Chanel Fox, I think you're safe. I never know. Kenny, I met Mullen Bibbins, Juanita. Good morning, Monica Monet. Are you over? Are you are you set for Friday? I got I gotta I gotta get you there. Lady Vice, the overseer Ryan Picard. Good morning, Pastor John J. Davis. I know you in the room, you and Sister Davis, Jolika Taylor, Brenda and Brown, Travis Wells. Good morning, sir. Valerie Williams Bertani. Yes, Latrice Fuller Ellis, Pearl Evans. Hey, I'm here now. Let's go. <laughs> Tina Cole, yes. Annette Mariante, Deborah Wilson, Elder Kathy Hawkins, Jack, I'm so glad to be back. Listen, I've been on this mad travel, uh, preaching like I was 13. <laughs> but oh my God, when I tell you God is doing something, when I tell you God is doing something amazing, Good morning to my Instagram family. So glad y'all are here with me. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Come on in and like and share. Please share on your page. Hey, good morning, my Kathy Chisley. God bless you. Sonia Wilson, good morning. Sandra L. Coleman, Jonathan is on his way. Come on, let's go, Wendy, Wendy. Let's go, sis. I know I'll see you. Sharon Burris, Laurie, how's them legs and knees coming? Elder Ladia. <laughs> Did you say big? Oh, it's big. It's big. John Andrew, if I could pick you up and translate you, I would. <laughs> Overseer Ryan, yes, yes. Hey, Dr. Anika, I see you. I'm looking. 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, 50 years. And we are so excited about it. God is doing some amazing things with us. And when I tell you, the city has really, uh, really been nice to us. The city has really been nice to us. And so many of the city leaders have really uh, responded well. But it's really for the people. It's really for the cathedral. And those of you that have watched our journey, those of you that have seen the work that we have done in the city, uh, that's really going to be their celebration, that they would be able as a people to know their value, <laughs> their value. And so uh, I'm excited for the people of God at the cathedral. I'm excited about all of you who are coming locally, those of you that are traveling. I honor the Lord for you. But it's a great time in the, in the spirit. It's a great time. Uh, good morning, Jamie. Did you leave out? You came and left. Praise God. Sorry. Chris, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Chris, Chris said you're going to be so charmed. <laughs> Come on in. Good morning, Iris Mitchell. Jessica, my love, love. God bless you, baby. Helene Evans, 4083. Iris, thank you. It's Morello. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. If it's over here, if it's over there. We're Pastor William Limon. Good morning. Good morning, Evangelist Dakiva. Oh, we come and we get it together. Juanita Campbell, yes. Sharon Richmond Williamson. Hallelujah. Pat Nicholson. What a service we had on Sunday, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, God moves at 1745 East Grand Boulevard. It does. And I've been so fortunate to shepherd that house for the last 37 years. What a privilege. What a privilege. My dad pastored a little over 15. And uh, then I was made the pastor uh, in February of 1986. My mom and dad founded the work in 1972. They released it in 1971. And it took us that time to do it in order. And we motivated from uh, 2501 East McNichols to 935 Alger. Praise God, 51 years ago. And uh, it's been a marvelous journey, a marvelous journey. So I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited about what God is doing and how God is doing it. I'm very excited about watching uh, people want to be around and uh, see what the Lord has done. And we could not have done it. Good morning, Miss Sheba. Good morning. I am Chris Brooks. Brooks. Hey, Chris, Chris. How are you, son? Mrs. Sheba. Good morning, Lady Sims. Um, we could not have done it without the Lord on our side. I promise you, if it had not been for the Lord on our side. So we are excited about what God is doing. Welcome Zoomers. Welcome those of you on free conference call. My sister Ruthie, we've been up all night <laughs> with our SVPs at the last minute. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but it's all good. It is all good. Listen, uh, I want to... I want to go back to um, our lesson where we are discussing Holy Spirit in our personalities. And uh, Bowler sent me something that I think is very uh, powerful. Listen to this. Normalize. I'm willing to work on that instead of that's just how I am. I want, I want you to hear that. This is so powerful. Good Kimberly. Kimberly is speaking to Evangelist Akiva, Bishop Herbert Jackson, my bishop, Dr. Anika Wilson Brown, my pastor. Good morning, Sora, Angela Marshall, Marquita Brown, Juanisha Swain. Good morning, Sharon Bostic. Good morning, my little sister. She said, Y'all, y'all driving. She's the data entry person. So I, I ain't even bother her because I know 
I know us. I want you to hear this. This is really good. Listen to this. No, Chris. Oh, what? Oh, baby. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Well, I love you. Amen. I know it's going to be good. I got to find out what's going on, right? <laughs> Listen, normalize. I'm willing to work on that. Instead of that's just how I am. Somebody write that down. Ah, Rebecca Ondora, Mama Pearl, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mama. Camilla, come on, somebody write that down. Normalize. I want you, us to hear this. Normalize. <clears throat> I'm willing to work on that instead of, well, that's just how I am. <laughs> Good morning, Chaplain. Good morning, Dr. Aqua. God bless you. Oh, my God. I need us to hear that one more time. Normalize. You know, I'm willing to work on that. Instead of, well, that's just how I am. I, I thought that was so, so powerful. Whoa, come on, Teresa Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hallelujah normalize i'm willing to work on that oh come on ooh, 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 ooh. thank you pastor sheila hallelujah let, let let me say it for the people in the back <laughs> normalize i'm willing to work on that come on let's let's normalize that normalize i'm willing to work on that Instead of, well, that's just how I am. This is the power of personal Pentecost. Personal Pentecost says that there is work being done on me by receiving spirit baptism. There is work being done on me by receiving spirit baptism. Thank you, Dr. Silver. We are so quick, thank you, Ms. Sheba, to say in response to push back and say, well, that's just how I am. We are so quick to do that. We are so quick to get defensive or to feel insulted. Let us normalize, I'm willing to work on that. When an aspect of our personality is unlike Christ, when an aspect, now this, listen, I hear Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what, what gets us is who tells us, who told me or how they said it, all right? <laughs> ah, my God, my God. When I receive spirit baptism, I received the grace of change. I received the grace of transformation. I receive power to change. Jesus says, you will be my witnesses. After that, Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses. Now, if I'm going to make you my witness, then I've got to do the work on you so that your witness is aligned with me. You're not your witness. You're my witness. And so if you are going to be my witness, then when you receive my spirit and you accept the promise of the Father, then you shall receive power to change power, the grace to be transformed. 
Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you, Ann. Uh, Hillary. Uh, oh, my God. Holy Spirit sponsors our theory of change. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I, I must accept that I'm not his witness. Listen to this. I, I was I was looking at this uh, just the other day. I was at an installation service and Holy Spirit just kind of came in and uh, d- d- did what he does. But listen to this. It says, and you shall receive power when Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness. Not that you are instantly my witness, but you will be my witness. So the work of transformation, our theory of change, come on, best practices. And and we talk a lot about best practices in education at a high level, best practices at a high level, best practices. We talk a lot about best practices. And so I'm thinking that the church of the Lord Jesus, the Pentecostal spirit baptized aggregation of believers, we need to start talking about best practices. Best practices, what? What are the best practices for my life? Best practices for my ministry? Best practices. <laughs> For our personalities. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Come on here. Listen to what the chaplain says to us. Said, who tells us and what happened? If something we think is wrong happened, we feel justified in going on. Oh my God. Mm-mm. No, 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 and no. That's a personality glitch. That's a glitch in your armor. So when Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be my witness. You ain't my witness yet, but you will be. There's going to be some proving, some training, some preparation, and it's not all outward. Some of it is the work I have to do inwardly on you. And so... (laughs) Why do we get so testy when we are being brought, when when attention is being brought to us about a best practice? What was a better way to talk? What was a better way to speak? What was a better way to handle that? And we get so testy. And so we, we... We really have to understand the working of personal Pentecost, personal Pentecost, personal Pentecost. We talk about it in nursing. What are best practices? There's Cathedral. Good morning, Robinson Tracy, our chairperson. Good morning, Ruthie. God bless you. My sister over Leah, see you, Lanita. I want to get this to you. Good morning, India. Good, good afternoon, India. My bishop from India, God bless you, and all of the churches will go tell it there in India. When we think about best practices, somebody write that down, and we start talking about, okay, what are best practices? What does that look like? That when, when we say, okay, that let's let's do that a different way. Let's approach that differently. It's not about who says it to us. And it's not really about how they said it. We have to realize the work of the body and the work of Holy Spirit in the body to bring about this witness, this witness of Jesus Christ. And so this, these are these are personality glitches. <laughs> Somebody said, think about best practices. <laughs> we don't like to be corrected. Come on, we don't like it. But especially when we think we did our we we did it, you know, we did it, and we just know 
That's not the best way to handle that. And we go off, we, 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 we get, we get, we get, we, it's, it's not a good look, folks. But that is because we have not normalized, let me work on that. We have not normalized, let me work on that. No, I, I did my best. If you don't like it, huh, huh, well, that's the best I could do. Huh, well, you know, that's all I got. Huh, uh, well, well, if you don't like it, do it yourself. Here we go. Here, <laughs> Lord have mercy. I quit. Oh my God. I, I ain't got to do this. I ain't, I ain't got to do it. You know, <laughs> you know, the pay ain't that great. <laughs> and if you're working in the church and you volunteering, well, you know, we don't get paid. That's the first thing you say. <laughs> no, let's normalize. Okay, let me work on that. Let me work on that. Now, when we say that, when we when we openly honor the working of Holy Spirit with our words, okay, let me work on that. When we openly honor, when we openly admit, that's an area that I can upgrade. That's an area that Holy Spirit is in my life to correct. We want to be used of God. We want God to use us to bless others, but we don't want to deal with whether or not I need to change in order for Holy Spirit to work through me. Okay, I want you to get this. Uh, well, you know, uh, 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 that ain't what you said in the beginning, you know, husbands and wives. You know, you said so and so and blah, 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 you know, relationship. Blah, blah, blah. You know, no, listen, to, listen, 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 listen when we are dealing with, I love that the a theory of change. Holy Spirit gives us the grace to upgrade. Holy Spirit gives us the grace to be a better witness. Holy Spirit is constantly working on your growth. Woo, reflection is a growth litmus. Come on here. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. My God. My God. My God. Holy Spirit wants us to be aware that I'm here to make some changes. I'm here to make you his witness. And if you want me to work through you, I got to work on you. I got to work on you so that I can work through you. Somebody write that down. Holy Spirit must work on us in order to work through us. And so these amazing uh, fruit manifestations, these are amazing. These are amazing. And so Holy Spirit, I love that Glenda, that these negative patterns, uh, these negative patterns, uh, I know Dr. Anika is here and she's, a, she's more of a clinician professional <laughs> than I am. <laughs> but I know by spirit, she's a real clinician. There are other clinicians here, counselors, etc. But Holy Spirit is constantly working on our growth, our inward growth, so that we can break these negative patterns that we have developed around our temperament. These negative patterns that we have normalized because we are quick to say, oh, that's just how I am. No, how about, you know, let me work on that. Let me, let me own that and let me work on that. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Uh, if, if we don't allow Holy Spirit to work on us, well, what is he working on? Your personality. He's working on your temperament. <laughs> Dr. Mika, I need your help here. I get out of here and don't know where I am. I'm serious, though. 
we 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 don't want to say oh mm, okay best practices i'm willing to work on that let me work on that i'll i'll improve that area oh no uh-uh no uh-uh we 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 uh-uh no it's your fault it's your fault it that's 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 deflection because we're uncomfortable with reflection Ooh, that's deflection so we don't want to make course corrections come on uh latrice we we don't want no no uh-uh it's me let me thank you let me work on that let me work on that holy spirit help me in this area to raise this to best practices what are the best practices <laughs> because when i say let me work on that instead of getting defensive then i recognize that holy spirit is bringing this to my attention not because you know he doesn't love me or holy spirit doesn't want me involved no wants me to be his witness and this will pop up and not and, and, and destroy the witness you see what what we don't like about this whole business of being in the witness in the in the in the witness uh, group we are in the we we own the, the witness patrol that 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 our personalities our temperaments must be mastered by the working of holy spirit the working of the word of god in our lives we must master these things but we don't have to master it alone. We master it by the working of Holy Spirit in our lives. Woo, come on, we, we, we quit to deflect because we don't like that mirror, that reflection. Now, these, these, um, these uh, fruit manifestations are amazing. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, when when Paul says, when 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 you when, let's go there to Galatians uh, chapter number five. See, the sinful nature wants to do evil. So I want you to understand, the sinful nature is your Adamic temperament, your Adamic wiring. Now it was perfect before the fall. But once the fall happened, then the temperament, your wiring fell as well. Are you hearing me? And so whatever my environment fed me, whatever words were spoken over me, now that temperament, that Adamic nature in me has absorbed negative patterns has absorbed has has been engulfed by watching observing listening to and so my nature my sinful adamic wiring has a lot of layers to it first of all what god gave me is sinful now <laughs> that uh, we have fallen we have a fallen nature now that adam has done what it was that adam did now we have a fallen nature okay and so what already <laughs> was not perfect is now sinful in the in which it does not want to obey so we we hear the gospel and we accept the gospel and we want to live the gospel, right? But in order for us to be processed so that the gospel of Jesus Christ is made manifest in our lives, we must receive spirit baptism. Now, I received the indwelling of Holy Spirit when I received Jesus. But that sinful nature is yet there. That wiring, 
that Adamic wiring. Then you add all of the various influences. Thank you, Dr. Gardner. Thank you. You're helping me. Influenced by internal and external factors, experiences, environmental, sin, our worldview, our prejudices, our biases, our perceptions, our religion, our liturgies. All right. <laughs> And so all of these things, words, words spoken over us, words uh, given to us, words that we didn't even have a say so about. And so now this Adamic sinful nature that doesn't go away when you get saved. See, your temperament doesn't go away when you get saved. <laughs> No, but now Holy Spirit must help us to submit that to our spirit, our regenerated, our newly informed spirit that now is indwelt by Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? And so now we must we must be able to allow the way Holy Spirit changes us to become normalized in our lives. Now, watch this. I'm in Galatians 5. That sinful nature, that Adamic wiring <clears throat> wants to do evil. I'm in verse 17. Galatians 5, 16. So I say, let Holy Spirit guide your lives. And then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Which is just the opposite of what spirit wants. And Holy Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Listen to this. Listen to this tug of war. <laughs> Listen. You're, you're not fighting uh, 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 something in the uh, atmosphere. You're fighting you. The, the fight you have is with you, your nature. You have a newly created spirit, but your nature, your environmental setup and alignment, the way that you have been formed by those who raised you, by your religious exposures, by your trauma, by the things that you had no control over. Now, that sinful nature that Adamic wiring that has been in charge of your life. Now, Holy Spirit is present. The word is coming forth. And now this tug of war in terms of to do what Holy Spirit wants. You're not fighting a demon. You're fighting you. <laughs> You're fighting you, call your name. It's you that, that fights spiritual transformation. And God puts people in our lives. God puts people around our lives to accelerate this process. God puts us in the body of Christ so that the body of Christ begins to do its work. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Let me just say something. Let me show you something. I am a nurse by profession, right? And, 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 oh my God. There, the body is so marvelously designed by God. Do you know that if you create the right pH balance in your body, you will never get sick. 
So we, we, we fluctuate between alkaline and acidic, alkaline and acidic. So you can have too much alkaline or too much acid, but the pH balance of the body, somewhere between seven and nine or five and nine, I don't know, when I was in school, it's been a long time. And so if you keep that pH balance, drinking water, eating the right foods, avoiding sugar, avoiding a lot of gluten, uh, being careful with the meat and being careful with hours of eating and food groupings. If, if you do that, do you realize that the body has the ability to stay well? The body. If anything gets in the body, long before you get to the doctor, your body goes to work to push that impurity out. Your body goes to work. Somebody, somebody said to me that, oh, I was so sick in my stomach. I, I, I said, you must have eaten something. Uh, and and uh, she, I think I had a 20 bar buck. Mm -mm, you ate something that the body wasn't happy with. And the body goes into 100%. Let's go clean this out. Let's clean this out. And so pain, when you get a pain in your shoulder, <laughs> you get a pain in your knee, you get a pain in your head. The body is telling you, I need to fix this. I need to fix this. This, this is before you get to a clinician or practitioner. Your body has the ability now, if you ignore it, if you don't correct it, now you have to go to the doctor. Now, the doctor has to create wellness either through a surgery or through medication, IV drip. But most times, if you come in and you are in some type of disease, the first thing we do as a triage nurse is we put a bag on you because 90% of the time you are dehydrated. And if you are dehydrated, the body can't push out the virus or the infections as it should. So then we write you a prescription and that is to enable certain functions that are not working well to begin to function to help the body to get well. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. It's the body. So you are born by the spirit. You are accepted in the beloved, but he immediately places you in the body. Why? He places you in the body so that the body can keep you well. Ooh, I'm teaching better than you. I'm teaching better than y'all shouting. The body can keep you well. So when people say, well, I'm, I'm a loner, you know, I, I don't get along with people well. And no, no. Mm -mm. The body is intended. It's very intentional that the body has the ability to heal the discrepancies in our character but if we are always defensive or we always want god to do it we always if god wants me to change that he would change me. no he placed you in the body and the body has everything it needs to heal you and to cause you to, to walk in best practices. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, my prayer mind too. I pray for you. You pray for me, my God. Uh, are you hearing me? And so when you bump up against something in the body, whether it's a leader or another member of the body, that is to, to bring to your attention. This is an area that is going to make the body sick. You see, you, you're so, so focused on your own salvation, 
on your own relationship with Christ. But what about your relationship in the body? In the body of Christ. So the body, body life, is identical to our physical body. And the body of Christ has within it everything that is needed to stay well, to stay healthy. This is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, that when you come to the table, you must discern the body. Woo, glory to God. You must discern the body. Because if you don't discern the body well, then you will drink damnation to yourself. And if you drink damnation to yourself, then you will fall in the category of those that are weak, those that are sickly, and those that die before their time. And many of you are trying to get well without the body. You're trying to be an independent solo believer. No. When you were saved, Jesus immediately baptized you into the body. Now, you have to allow the body to raise your awareness, to raise. And so instead of saying, well, that's just how I am, why not say, hey, I'm going to work on that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Because that is what, when we come to communion, we come to the table of the Lord with the body that we have been assigned to. And that body is a part of the bigger body. Now, Holy Spirit dwells in the elements. Holy Spirit dwells on the table. And Holy Spirit dwells in the people that we call the body. Now, if you have issues, if you have temperament issues, you have nature issues, you have personality issues, that same body is, is where you have been placed must be intentional about driving that out or it will disrupt that body's environment. Ooh, shut up. You, 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 you got you to hear this. You got to hear this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so we don't want anybody in the body to correct us. We don't want that. We don't want somebody to say, you just out of order. Stop it. This ain't the time for that. Oh, okay. Now we got to. We got an infection. Now, now we now we got a virus about trying to start. I, I, I got, I got, I, I'm telling you, I've got stories how one person can spread a virus in a local body. One person, one person's temperament, one person's personality can destroy a group, a small group. One person's weakness, personality's flaw character insufficiencies can cause a virus in that body. Woo. <laughs> is anybody hearing me? Oh my God. All you need is one deviant cell. We call it in, in the medical world, a free radical. Just one free radical. And if a free radical gets, a cell gets loose in your body, and it attaches itself to a major organ, or it attaches itself to a lung or to uh, the bloodstream or to a bone, it can cause a major shakeup in the body. And so the rest of the body, this is why we take antioxidants and we drink our juices and we do what we're supposed to do. The rest of the body now must drive that free radical out. And I have watched, I've watched people's personalities and people's temperaments cause a virus in a group, 
in a church, in the leadership, one person talking, one person being disruptive, one person not following the proper channels for change, one person can cause a virus in that body. Are you listening to me? Ooh, and, and the fallout is great. The fallout. This is why Peter says we must not be what? Busy bodies. We must not be busy talking and always got an opinion, always got some, No, you have to be careful. But that comes from our sinful nature. And Holy Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of our of our sinful nature and these two forces i mean galatians 5 17 are fighting constantly each other these two forces are constantly fighting these two forces your adamic nature and your newly spiritually transformed nature constantly fighting each other but when you are directed by holy spirit now what happens when i follow my temperament what happens when i allow my personality to rule instead of holy spirit here it is sexual immorality impurities lustful pleasures idolatry i don't listen you can't justify this stuff you got to stop justifying bad behavior <laughs> you cannot say well because i was abused or because i've gone through so much this is why i am like i am Come on, folks. You have received the most powerful, powerful, powerful spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you for that, Lenita. That's why Paul said, that boy that's sleeping with his father's wife, put him out. Why put him out? Because a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Don't even eat with him. Don't sit and discuss nothing with them. Some of you all don't realize how foul you are. You don't realize how dangerous you are. You don't realize how dangerous your conversations are. You don't realize how dangerous your mouth is, how dangerous, how foul you are. Because it's normalized to you. It's normalized to always have an opinion. You've normalized that, well, I don't like it, so I ain't going to do it. You've normalized that stuff. You've normalized, well, I don't think that's right. So I just got to wait for God to speak to me. You've normalized bad behavior and you've grown. You are grown and you've normalized being always not satisfied. Everything got to be going your way. No, you normalize bad behavior. And you have used your, your, your issues, your traumas, your life to normalize your dysfunction. No, folks. No. This is why you have been given Holy Spirit. You've been given the most powerful powerful intellect of the world you've been given the most powerful force in the world to help you with your weaknesses holy spirit does not help us with our strengths holy spirit helps us with our weaknesses oh come on you good god almighty you got to stop using your childhood as the reason for you being a jerk. 
you got to stop using the absence of your father or the absence of your mother or the absence of hugs and kisses. You got to stop using. Well, I was raped. I was violated. I was exposed. I get it. And I'm sorry. But you got to stop allowing that to dictate your ungodly behaviors your ungodly lusts, your ungodly appetites. Ooh. Oh my God, you have the most powerful force in the universe to help you call Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit deal throughout the night. All that reactive. Well, I would I, if I didn't I had to do this to survive with you. Why are you surviving now? You've been baptized in the body. You've received Holy Spirit. You've been placed in the local church. You have the word, you have the spirit, you have praise. Why are you still operating out of that modality? And some of y'all, I'm just sick of it. You want to be unhealthy. You want to be, well, it's the way I feel. Your feelings are not God. My, my feelings ain't God. You want to be sick. You want to be pitiful. You want to be sorrowful. You want that. You don't want to, to grow up and and be strong in the Lord. No, because you have identified your normal as dysfunctional. Why, why, why would you want the Holy Ghost? Why you want the Holy Ghost? Why, why, you, why, why did you receive spirit baptism? Why did you even ask for it? Why did you even want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Why? You didn't have to. You could have just been another believer that believed in the finished work of Christ and just live your life. Why Why you want to be spirit-filled and dysfunctional? Why did, why did you even ask for baptism of the Holy Spirit? And you're pitiful. You're pitiful. Stop being pitiful. Stop normalizing pitiful behavior. Stop normalizing. Ooh, shut up. <laughs> Listen, here's what happens when we allow our sinful nature, our sinful temperament. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry. I want to hit that idolatry for a moment. Because idolatry is not that you go to the temple and worship another God. It's not limited to that. <laughs> many, many times. The idolatry is of our opinions, of our mindset. We idolize ourselves. We idolize our opinions. We idolize. <laughs> hey, come on. John, we are pitiful. You just, pitiful. And, and I can see you coming. Hey, you just pitiful. But you've been like that for years. And there are people who enable that deviant behavior in you. And so the moment you walk into a body that's healthy and that body identifies, <laughs> you're unhealthy. <laughs> you're unhealthy. You get offended. I'm not unhealthy. I've been like this. This is this is this is how this is how I am. No, you've made your opinion an idol. You've made the way you do things an idol. Oh, I hear this as I've been a leader all my life, right? And I hear this all the time. Well, that's the way I was raised. How long ago was that? You haven't changed since then. <laughs> You, you haven't changed you haven't changed since the, since the time you was raised 
You can you stop being raised about six, seven years old. And you how old now? 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. What? Why is that your immediate response? Because you don't want to change. You have idolized an opinion. You have idolized a mindset. You have idolized a behavior pattern. And so you don't idolize uh, statues and things. You're smarter than that. You idolize self. Self idolization. My way is right because this is the way I've been. This is the way I was raised. This is the way I was taught. No, no. Holy, that is the operation of your sinful temperament. <laughs> Oh my God. You know, the first thing a stubborn person says, I'm not stubborn. <laughs> That's the first thing a stubborn person will say. I'm not stubborn. Let that be, let, raise that to them and say, you know, you're really stubborn in this. You need, you need to work on that. I'm not stubborn. That's the first thing a stubborn person will tell you. I'm not stubborn. They'll let you know you're stubborn. <laughs> Why do we want Holy Spirit? And we don't want to change. Why do we ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we don't want to change? <laughs> watch this, watch this. So, sorcery, hostility, quarreling. Well, if you grew up in a quarreling household, oh my God, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Look at this selfish ambition. We read this and we don't think none of that's us. That ain't me. That's all of us. That's our sinful nature. <laughs> oh, Mama Lulu, I love you, baby. Listen to me. This, this fight is real. The warfare is real. <laughs> Woo, Galatians chapter number five. Look at this. It says dissensions. I mean, verse 20, divisions. Look at this. Envies, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have said before, that anyone that is living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ooh. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Just like an addict saying, my addiction is not that bad. You you know you, you're drunk. I'm not a drunk. I, I can control it. I, I drink because I like it. <laughs> when I deal with addiction, addictive behavior, addictive personalities, all addictions is not a drug or a chemical. Sometimes your stimulant is affirmation. Sometimes your stimulant is religion. Sometimes your stimulant is ministry. We got more addicts in the church than we know. And they ain't never did heroin or fentanyl, but they addicted to ministry because that's their stimulant. Woo, shakaba. Woo, we, we don't like it. We, ha, 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 ha. Now, this, this is the part I love. I love when y'all do this. I love when y'all think I'm not talking about you. I'm watching these comments. And everybody's talking about somebody else. This ain't for them. They're not here. It's for me. I love this when y'all do that. I be, I just, I, I just be, I be tickled. Some people this and others do. Ain't nobody talking about this. They're not in class this morning. This is for you. This is for me. Do you think that this is for other people? They're not here. You're not here to ask no questions on their behalf. You're here because God sent you here. We, 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 we love deflecting. Let's deflect because we don't think we stink. We don't think we leaking. We don't think. We, we, we always think about somebody else. Why are you thinking about somebody else? Holy Spirit is not talking to them people today. Holy Spirit.
Spirit is talking to us in this class. It's about 1,200 people in this class right now. That's who all the Spirit is talking to. He ain't talking about them. He's talking about you, me, us. We don't think Holy Spirit is ever talking to us. Because we have idolized <laughs> our iniquities. We have idolized our deficiencies. We have idolized our dysfunctions. We have idolized our bad behavior. We have idolized it. And we have made it okay. It's not. That's why the song the Lord gave me is Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Holy, what? Holy Spirit, we have idolized our dysfunctions. We have idolized our bad behavior. We have normalized our mess. We have made our mess okay. Woo! And it's not okay, Sean. Somebody put in there in the chat. It's not okay. It's not okay. Holy Spirit ain't talking to them. Talking to you, me, us in this class. Those of us that will watch in the replay, that's who he's talking. It's not okay that you are spirit baptized, that you are a member of the body of Christ, and you are still manifesting dysfunctional behavior. It's not okay. It's not okay. Write it down. It's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. And instead of normalizing it, Hey, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Well, that's just the way I am. Or oh, I'm not that ain't how I am. That is the clear sign that that's who you are. And the enemy has so deceived us with our religious selves to think none of this in verse. Oh, we want to jump to verse 22, but we don't want to deal with verses 19, 20, and 21. No, because that ain't us. That's, that's how crazy. This whole religious world is, it's never about me. It, I'm sitting in church thinking, oh, I sure wish somebody else was here to hear this. And God said, well, are, you, are, we, are, we, are we crazy? What kind of liquor are we drinking? Yeah, we don't never think it's us, it's us. And the moment someone raises it up to us, our temperament is so out of sync with Holy Spirit. We normalize going off instead of normalizing, accepting the recommendation for best practices. Then why did you want Holy Spirit? Why did you even ask to be baptized in spirit? Why do you even speak in tongues? Why? Our prayer lines is always about somebody else. Well, Lord, when do I pray about me? We go all over the world talking about this person, all in the spirit. Just, oh, we just holler. And never say, it's me. <laughs> Why would you even want Pentecost to hit your life if you don't ever intend for Holy Spirit to change your nature? To help you temper that nature. To bring to our awareness what is out of alignment with our witness of Jesus Christ. Ooh. <laughs> ah, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on now. This is the purpose of Holy Spirit in our lives. This is the purpose of the paracletos he gotta work on us so he can work through us and he's gonna use the body to get us together and you don't want a specialist to come in <laughs> you don't want sometimes the five-fold ministry gift sometimes but you don't want that you don't want god 
to deal with you. You want the body to drive that out. Oh, Holy Spirit, deal with me. <laughs> Holy Spirit, deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it right. Lord, deal throughout the night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. I give you authority. Hey, until all in my life becomes yours. I got to go. <laughs> Woo! My God, my God, my God. Woo! 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 Holy Spirit, deal with me. This is why spirit baptism is so important. I got to go. Don't we'll be back.